Hey guys, what's up? This is the Bull. Welcome to the Bull's Garden. I have a lot going on today. It is so beautiful out. After all these heavy rains for the last four or five days, it's just been raining and you couldn't be out in the garden at all. So today we have some sun. So I'm gonna get out here today and finish uh, seeding a lot of plants that I'm doing. I'm doing a lot of trades. I'm, I'm having a big garden this year. I'm gonna grow. I'm gonna grow just everything I can think of that I like to eat. Let's take a walk around and so I can show you what I'm doing right now. Today, I'm getting some more potatoes in. Potatoes, potatoes, potatoes. I love potatoes. And we're gonna get some more potatoes in the ground. And let's just take a little walk around. And I got a little surprise for you. All right, this year, the plan was to grow everything from seed. The only, the only difference to that was just um, the potatoes that I, that I, um, purchase and then i and, and then in that case i also cut them into multiple pieces so i was able to multiply those potatoes so over here we have some baby um well they're not baby they're um little little gem they're called little gem letters got the uh sweet potatoes over here that i'm taking from slips and i'm continually making trays we have um the long um eggplants right there in the background we got some um jalapeno peppers these are other regular straight peppers different more different um varieties of eggplant we have the big fat cherry tomatoes california peppers and then over there, we have something that we're not gonna talk about right now. Over here, we have a tray of spinach, whole tray of spinach. And then right here, we have different types of um, brassicas, just different different variety of brassicas. They're, um, which ones are these ones here? They're all doing really good as well, too. Some of these, uh, Copenhagen cabbage and just they're all different types in there and then over here these trays here these trays will follow on later on we, over there we got the kahusa squash the acorn squash zucchinis different types of pickles uh, calabaza pumpkins buttercup squash patty pan squash spaghetti squash all that though those will all follow so and, and within another i'll let these grow out for another once they start growing another five six weeks i'll keep them in the trays and i'll pot them if i have to and then we'll get those out into the garden later on when it really warms up let's take a look at the espalier pear tray here now as we look close here we can see that the tree is putting out fruit Nice little bundles of uh, pears that are forming up in there. Over there we have our mulberry tree. That's the burgundy mulberries. Okay, down here we have all these containers, right? These containers are gonna be for my um, uh, survival seed uh, 2024 collaboration. All those seeds right now, they're inside in the, in the greenhouse and they're uh, germinating. And later on when the time is right, I'll move them out to their individual containers. Now this, this is a pear tree. This is a keeper's pear right here. And this this pear right here is one of the, the pear trees that I was able to obtain from Home Depot for $5. I ended up getting five trees. Each one of them was actually ended up being like $4.50. So I ended up getting five of them. And this is a keeper's pear, right? And let me show you here how well it's doing. 
right there you can see it's it's actually putting out fruit already <laughs> so so she's putting out fruit we don't know if we're gonna let those grow or not we're just gonna watch them for a little while and if necessary I'll pick them off over here we have the Bing cherry and the Bing cherry now is starting to bud out so it won't be long and this will get loaded with flowers and we'll see if we get some fruit off this this year. Looking down to the ground there, I could see some green starting to pop up here and there. And those are my raspberries. This area right here gets nice and full with raspberries. So we're looking forward to them growing. Blueberries are doing fantastic. Different types of varieties of uh, blueberries. Looks like it's gonna be a good year for the blueberries. The nectarine trees are in full bloom. Now I know that tree right there that we're looking at is gonna give me a nice harvest. That's fruit right there. It's doing well. I, I mean, all over, you can see. You can see fruit just forming everywhere. That's, that's a moon globe here. All the figs are growing really nice. All the figs are starting to leaf out. Over here we have my little patio peach. Every year she doesn't fail. Looks like she's gonna give me a nice harvest this year of fruit again. Santa Rosa plum in full bloom. Down here at the bottom of this moon globe here, here we have this whole area right here. It's all potatoes growing under there. there. As a matter of fact, you can see potatoes popping up right there then all those rows there they're different types of um let's take a closer look this row right here is going to be as you can see they're real tiny right now but this whole row all the way down those are little little gem letters different type of cabbage is growing all the way down mustard greens and kale and so on and so on and so on there's my Alberta Alberta she's in full bloom right now too she's not as it's bloomed up as the other ones there but nevertheless she's in full bloom now this tree right here this is one of the the trees that I got for free that was thrown into the trash at one of the stores uh, a couple years ago. And as you can see, she is delivering now. She's living her best life. My little walkway here is looking sweet with the rocks that, um, you know, I got from my retaining area there. I had leftover rocks, so, you know, I had to put them to use. 
Got the mustard greens running around the side there. And then in the middle, I got a mixture of different, um, it's a, a salad bar, basically, different types of lettuce in the middle. My golden plums, it's just starting right now. It's just starting right now, the golden plum. It's just starting to break out. Now over here we have the peach tree, right? And this peach tree here was in full, full bloom. And now she's, you know, she started dropping off, you know, some fruit because she was just had way too many. And you know, whatever's left, you know, sticking around, those are the ones that will put out some peaches. And she's still got a lot. I'm pretty sure she's still gonna be dropping some of them because I mean, she just just loaded down. I would have to I would have to thin her out anyway, because if you could just see, just you know, just way too much fruit on this tree here, so. So whatever you can see right there, if you look real, real close, let's see if I can get in real, real close. You can kind of actually see the little, right there in the middle, you can see the little peach forming. Down there, you can see the beets. The beets are doing really well. The garlic is looking fantastic. Now, those are my onions down there. I just dozed them off earlier this morning with some bone meal. So I have to come and uh, just hose it down just there so it won't look like it has snow on it. <laughs> there you can see I have some of my strawberries underneath this net here so that um, I'm able to enjoy some because these squirrels are just relentless. Okay, over here is one of my other $5 trees. This is the Belle of Georgia. And as you can see, she is um, blooming right now. She's doing fantastic. Let's take a walk down here. Pretty soon we'll have some Kushaw squash growing on that trellis over there. Now this first row right here, I gotta thin this out like crazy. That's um, a whole bunch of uh, turnips. So, once they get bigger, we'll thin them out. Then right here, you can barely see the carrots. The carrots are growing now. They're about two inches tall. Once they get to about five inches or so, I'll thin them out. These two rows right here, I'm gonna throw some more, some more potatoes in those rows there. Now over here, you can see this row, this is the russet potatoes that you all saw me planting earlier, a um, month and a half ago. You can start seeing them. They're all popping up there right now, all the way down. So they're doing fantastic. This row right here is a slow, slow and coming, but you can see right there, it's, one's popped up. And then this row right here is fully, fully, showing it's green now. I'm glad I finished with all those rocks over there. I single-handedly moved these over there with my uh, gorilla cart there. All right, so we're over here and this here, this is one of the other $5 trees that I got. And this one right here is a Baldwin pear. And as you can see, she's looking really nice. She's in 
leafed out really nice. No blooms on her, but I don't care. I'm not looking for the fruit on her. I'm looking for her to establish herself, and then she'll reward me later. Chickens are out in their yard doing their thing, living their best life. All right, over here, I got some work in progress. This whole area right here, I'm gonna just clean it out and, um, you know, just set it up. I'm gonna be planting all kinds of, most of like, you know, um, patty pan squash, spaghetti squash, more potatoes, things like that. I'm gonna be planting over here on this side over here. And, down here, you can see, I just, I just, a little while ago, I was working on it. Got this trench going right there, right out in front of the plants there. And you can see I have some potatoes down there. I got one right there, another one right there. Right, so they're gonna, they're gonna do very well. So they'll be growing right there. Just all curve appeal, baby, all curve appeal. <laughs> Let me throw some soil on top of these potatoes. Then also I'm gonna make a mound with this cistern soil that I have right here. So we'll get these covered up. There's some nice rich soil right here. So we're gonna cover the potatoes up with those there and then we'll just uh, cover them back up with this. Uh, this Now the rest of the, the soil from the property over here, I mean, I, I garden over here all the time. So there's, you know, the soil has been enriched to, to, to some degree, but most of the soil over here is sandy soil, which I love for growing uh, you know, uh, potatoes and anything that grows underneath the ground, you know, what I mean, it's just just good soil, good drainage. All right, we're just gonna go ahead and cover these back up now. So beautiful out today. I mean, just perfect right now. Especially over here, that we're underneath a lot of these trees here, so you don't have that sun beaming directly on you. these potatoes growing over here just like that kind of out of the way growing on the edge here then everything else that I plant over here will you know be able to spread out but don't matter 
potatoes under the ground. All right, let's move in this out a little bit here. When these potatoes grow, again, in a couple months or so, I'll come and hill them one more time and re-fertilize them. And that'll be it. All right. I don't know if you can remember this, this area right here is where I had my makeshift tent. Took it down, the lemon tree, the oranges, and several of the other plants that I had underneath there all did just fine. Peachy right there, the one you're seeing right there, she went broody. She's broody right now. And uh, that's why she's acting all kind of weird and whatnot. She finally came out after a couple of days. She's trying to shake it off real bad, but you know, the heat to want to be in the coop on those eggs is just too much. So I'm so glad that she finally get out. Look at her right now, she's looking like a turkey. So, all right, what I wanted to show you guys, let me see if you can hear it. Nope, they're being quiet. So anyway, I picked up, there you go, I picked up a few more chicks, added eight more chicks to my flock. So let me show you what I picked up. So I picked up two New Jersey Giants. I picked up two Leghorns, two Buff Orphantons. Now those are straight run. So what that means is I don't know if they're gonna be a rooster or they're gonna be hens. That's all they had was straight runs in the, um, the Buff Orphantons. So I'm taking a, a, a risk of ending up with a rooster and the other two are two black Ostra Lords. I know I'm jacking that Dave up, and I always have a hard time pronouncing that. So there you go. They're doing great. I just picked them up yesterday, so, and they're already drinking and eating, so. They're doing just fantastic. Let me show you uh, the setup that I have and the way I have it set up here. So as you can see here, they have their big brooder, right? Nice size brooder. Their food's on this side here. And they're able to hop over that two by four very easily to get onto the other side there. So I do that so that way, you know, wood chips and all that stuff don't get into the food and the water. So you can see it's nice and clean over there, right? and they hop right over there no problem they very acrobatic so anyway um so got this set up here just like that right so i'll keep them in here for three weeks three weeks they'll stay in this brooder and as soon as the three weeks are up they go to their big girl's house which is next door and i'll show you that right now so the big girl's house is over there on the other side over there. So what I do is once they be, they graduate to three weeks, I put them in their coop. I lock them up there for 
about five days. They stayed locked up in there five, six days without coming out. I have all their food and water inside there. Inside I closed this gate right here so that way the big chicks won't, well, I'm gonna close it until the five days are up. So that way, at that point in time, I'll let them just start coming out to their own run. So they have their run over there on that side. They have everything over here. They have their food source. They have their water and all that. They have things to jump up on and they have their own run over here. So, so and we'll keep them in there for a few months. And after they're about three, four months old, about close to the four, then I open this gate and they're on their own. And so what, what happens then, they'll all on their own, they'll just that same day, that same day, they'll migrate right into the right into the big girl's house and it's all over and they're introduced and then um of course they're they're the young girls on the block so they're gonna get picked on and whatnot but that's how it is you know and um they'll learn their their place in the flock and um there you are and they'll be introduced very easily that way okay i'll tell you that auto chicken door it's the best thing. Um, now I don't have to worry about coming out here at night. It automatically locks up. It secures the chickens. In the morning, I look out the window and the uh, auto door has already had opened up and I'll see the chickens out running around there, running there uh, in the chicken's yard and stuff like that. So it's, uh, it was the best thing. See what I got here? A shirt full of eggs. <laughs> That's, that's what you do when you, if you get your basket. Got to make your own basket. Y'all take care. God bless.